Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve MinStack, which is leak code problem 155. It is a very interesting problem where I think it's super clever once you know the answer and it feels like you can get to that answer, but sometimes you just don't quite get it. And here you are. So let's check it out. So this is one of those questions where you design a class, and that's actually very common for Fang style interviews. They get you to design basically a very clever class. So we want to design a stack that supports push, so putting an element on the stack, popping, taking the most recent one off, top, simply asking what is on the top without popping it off, and retrieving the minimum element in constant time. So that's the new interesting one that makes this all difficult. So we want to implement the min stack class, where min stack, the constructor, simply simply initializes the stack object. You can really do whatever you want there. A void push, so void just means it doesn't return anything. So it's going to push a value onto the stack. So it just pushes the element val onto the stack. Void pop, so that's actually strange that it's void because generally it would return the thing that's on the stack, but here it's just going to remove the element on top of the stack and not return anything. We have int top, so that's just going to ask what the top element on the stack is. It gets the top element without removing anything. And int get min is going to just get the minimum element on the stack. And don't worry, we don't have to pop that off. That would actually be a lot more difficult. And again, we must implement a solution with O of 1 time complexity for each function. So anytime we run any of these functions once, we expect that to be constant time. Now let's say that in order you're going to put on these four values into the stack. Now what's very clever here is we're actually going to make two stacks. And that's totally fine because you're really just using precisely double the space. And so we're going to start out with two empty stacks. Where this one, I'm just going to call it S. It's basically our normal stack. And here I'm going to call this M because this is the one that keeps track of specifically the minimum. Now let's put on our first value, which is five. And so that's just going to be an append where we put five onto this stack. And this one is always going to keep track of the minimum in the same place of here. And that'll make sense shortly. But here for this element of five, well, the minimum is also five. So we're just going to append that as well. Let's put on our second element of four. So if we do that on our stack, well, we just want to do an append. And so we put four at the end. And then our minimum, what is the minimum? Well, it could either be five or it could be four. We know that four is the smaller value. So we will append the minimum and that is going to be four. Now let's say for a second you asked what the minimum was. Well, we could just return the top of our minimum stack, which is going to be four. Now suppose again that we actually popped this element off here. So if you called pop, that's going to remove this. For our minimum stack, when we pop, we're actually going to pop that as well. And notice again here, if you were to ask the minimum, well, it's still five at this point. But we're actually going to undo that and just carry on. Now let's put on our new value, which is negative one here onto this stack. We're simply just going to add a negative one. Now for the minimum, we want to put on the smallest value. But notice we don't actually have to ask about this because we know that this value is going to be smaller than this one. In fact, it's always going to be organized like this where we have the minimum on the top here. So four is the minimum on the top. We want the minimum, which is again going to be negative one one. And so if you asked at this point, what is the minimum? Well, you would return the top, which is negative one. Get minimum is always just going to return the top of our minimum because that's always where it's going to be stored. As we add our element of 10, well, we're going to add 10 over here as expected. But then here we want to add the minimum. Well, the minimum is either my newest value or it is the thing that's at the top. We don't care about all this stuff because it's still always organized like this where it's going to get smaller as it goes further. Why is that the case? Well, we always want the minimum to be stored on the top. So in this case, well, negative one is actually smaller than 10. So our new minimum is the same as our our old minimum. And if you asked at this point, what is the minimum? Well, it's negative one. We just returned the top. If we popped anything off here, if you popped off our 10, well, then we need to simply just pop off this value. Yet again, we asked the minimum in here. Well, it's still the top right here. If you were adding a new value like negative 20, well, that could be the new minimum, or maybe it wouldn't be. We'd add negative 20 onto our normal stack. Is that the new minimum? Well, is it smaller than this value? the top of our min stack? Yes, it is. And so our new minimum is going to be stored at the top right here. We will always keep track of the minimum at the top of the stack. 
So let's just pop everything off here. If we take off the negative 20, we are going to take off the negative 20 over here. You ask the minimum, it's at the top right here. Say we took off the negative one. Well, we take off the negative one here. If you ask the minimum, it is gonna be four. Same thing, if you popped it off, we pop it off both, get the minimum, it's five. Same thing repeats. If you added another value, maybe you added a value of 10. Well, we'd add it 10 over here, but you wouldn't add the 10 over here because that's bigger than the value on our top which is the minimum, and so we would add the same value as it was before. So let's write our code. We need two stacks, so in the constructor or the init function, we'll make a self.stack to be an empty list, and we want self.min stack, that's our m, to be another empty list. They're both just gonna act as stacks, but the min stack will always be in control of the minimum value. Now when we push, that's the most interesting function here. So we always want self.stack.append the value. Our new stack is just going to accept that value. However, for our min stack, we need to say, well, firstly, if we don't have a self.min stack, meaning our min stack is empty, well, we know we just want the value. So we'll self.min stack.append the value. However, if it's true that the self.min stack at negative one, so that means the top of our minimum stack, meaning our minimum, our current minimum. So if our current minimum is less than the value, well, that means that our minimum value is still the minimum value. Okay. Our value is bigger. So we're not interested in keeping that. We want the old one. That means we do a self.minstack.append with our previous minimum, which is just the same value right here. So we want this one. Our previous minimum stays the same. Otherwise, if that wasn't true, we want self.minStack.append the value, need that new minimum, and so we will append that. And the other functions from here are really not too interesting. You want to do a self.stack.pop whenever we pop, and you also want the minimum to match. We also do a self.minStack.pop. When we ask what's on the top, well, that means just our normal stack. So we want return self.stack at negative one. Our minimum is not involved there. But when we want the minimum, well, we've actually already used that. This is our current minimum. We want the self.minStack at negative one. That is just the top of our minimum stack or our minimum value. As you can see, all of these functions just use append or pop. That means they are on average constant time. So that checks these boxes. And we just have to return that value. And that's really it. If I zoom out here, you'll see all of the code. If we were to run that, then we'll get accepted. Now you probably wouldn't get asked more about the complexity here, but if you were to, we say that the time complexity is O of one for each operation and the space complexity, well, that is kind of O of N because in general, you're storing this extra min stack here that really has nothing to do with the question. It just happens to be useful to solving the problem. So I'd say we're pretty much using an extra O of N here. I hope this was helpful. Drop a like if it was guys, and I'll see you later.